Enlightenment Garden here. It is mid-July 2021. I took a break from the channel for a little bit. But today I want to share with you one of my favorite plants in the yard. Actually a grass, bamboo. We're gonna take a tour of my yard and look at all of the varieties of bamboo that I'm growing. Bamboo is one of the most transformative plants you can put in your yard here. Uh, provides, you know, a beautiful tropical look to your yard, a microclimate builder, pumps oxygen into the air, you know, 30% more than other plants, um, helps clean toxins from the soil and the air. Just an amazing plant. I have several varieties growing here. I have more on their way that I'll be planting. So let's go, take a look. Out in front is an old hamai, giant timber bamboo. Uh, these are all clumping varieties, of course, so they're gonna stay to a fairly small footprint. None of these are gonna go outside of a six foot range. This one was planted four years ago. And we can see at the moment, it's putting on some new shoots. And you can just see how large these new shoots are. Yeah, I can just barely touch my fingers if I wrap them around that new comb. So as the plant ages, your combs will mature into their full size. Just a quick note, these bamboos are not going to get as large as they will in their native climate in Florida even, because, you know, we are very hot, we are very dry, soil is not ideal. So while these combs can get up to four inches in their ideal climate, they probably won't get any bigger than two to three inches here. And again, on height, this can get 50 to 60 feet tall in ideal here, probably will max out around 35 feet. And eat the shoots when they're young, of course, as with most bamboo. Uh, this one does take a little bit longer to establish. It's not as fast growing as some other varieties, but you can see it's a nice tight clumping habit and thick canes. Fairly straight combs, although you will have the occasional that, you know, kind of strays and they have more of a curved appearance. This particular planting is a little bit more in shade, so it looks a little bit better than my other ones that are in full sun. This variety is Asian lemon. It's not known to be as large of a bamboo. Great one for screening or a hedge. Uh, very ornamental. Takes the sun quite well. And we've got some new shoots coming in as well on this one. So you can see a yellow cane with a dark green stripe. Over here is an emerald bamboo. This one has struggled a bit because it was a transplant. Um, I am getting some new canes at this point. This is really the time of the year where you'll start to see those emerge as they do put their majority of growth on during the summer. So this one's not really excelled in our climate. Might have just been the plant itself. Maybe it wasn't as healthy of a root system. So this one's taking a little longer to grow. Right adjacent to it, I have a silver stripe. And this one also is very ornamental, beautiful. Um, straight canes, very tight habit.
And of course, uh, it gets its name Silver Stripe because as you can see, out on these canes, we've got a silver stripe running through the green comb. Um, this will be a future spot for a barbaletta or Barbie bamboo. Smaller form of bambusa chungai. Several clumps in this section of my yard. This is the newest planting that I've done of bamboo. So these are only about two years old and they really were installed here to create a protective microclimate for my subtropicals. I have really young mangoes in here that are gonna need some protection. And bamboo is a fantastic choice for that because it is evergreen, it takes the frost, and it also provides filtered light in the summer, like it's doing for this uh, Glen mango that I recently planted. So this is a clump of sea breeze, one of my favorites, um, probably the best variety for a living hedge or screen because it is so vigorous and fast growing yet tightly uh, clumping habit. This is also very wind resistant, very popular in Florida as a windbreak. So this one is only two years old, has quite a few new shoots that it's putting on. Get sun all day and you can see the leaves are not damaged really. I don't see any bleach. This one really stands up well to the sun. Out in front there is another giant timber. Um, unlike the sea breeze, you can see some damage, even though this one is behind the sea breeze and gets protected. There is quite a bit of bleaching of the leaves. Giant timber can take full sun, but it's not gonna look its best in that condition. And then out here, I've got a sea breeze, another sea breeze. So this one too is putting on new shoots. These are definitely growing in, providing a nice cover for plants like the banana and the mangoes. So past this Royal Poinciana, um, I have this pathway and I really wanted to define it with some bamboo on the sides and create more or less a tunnel. And these two clumps have really done that job for me. So these two are old hamai or giant timber bamboo. As of last year, I brought two chickens into my backyard. So um, this coop is situated right here because of the shade that these two bamboo plants provide. My yard is very open and it's becoming a lot more shaded because of all these clumps of bamboo. And this area is no exception. This was one of the hottest sections of the yard and now it's quite cool and nice here. 
and provides them good cover during the day. So again, I'll point out that, um, you know, with these giant timber, they do get a little bit of um, scorch on their leaves when they're in full sun. Also, they tend to not put on as much growth, at least with the example I have growing of the one in the shade versus this one. Um, these probably have a third less canes than the others. Girls are coming over to check things out. So we've got some new canes coming in here as well. And you can see all the mulch on the ground, so, you know, uh, bamboo will shed. And this is fantastic mulch for your yard. I use this all around my subtropicals. Um, the silica is very beneficial for conditioning your soil. Here are the Alphonse car. These are the miniature ones. Well, in Florida, they're said to get to like 12 feet tall. Here, I really haven't seen them, again, exceed that six to seven foot mark. You know, you'll have some that'll maybe be eight feet, but definitely on the smaller side and a very tight clumper. And quite thin. You know, these are almost pencil thickness. But fairly ornate, again, you've got the yellow cane with the green striping. So these you could even get away with potentially if you had a large container. Uh, you could plant Alphonse car in there. Cause... So this is one of the newest plantings in my yard. This is an Asian lime, which is the inverse of what I showed you earlier, an Asian lemon. So instead of having a yellow comb, it has a green comb with yellow stripes. And even though this was just planted last fall, it's really put on a lot of growth already and doing well. Although it had the benefit of going into a hole that already had really great draining and established soil with high organic material, which bamboo really need to do well. Um, I will tell you that one of the best places you can go and get bamboo, where I've gotten a lot of mine, is Tropical Bamboo Nursery out in Florida. Uh, likely, if you buy a, a bamboo plant locally here in Phoenix, um, that's where they got their plant from. They are the growers. And this is another spot that I'm prepping for another new planting. I'm going to be putting a sea breeze bamboo in this spot, mainly because I really want to block out uh, the neighbors. My goal is to not see any houses. The last bamboo I have in my yard is this um, Buddha belly. Now this is the variety that actually requires stress in order for the node to swell into the characteristic Buddha belly formation. Mine has never done that because I don't want to put this under stress. Um, while it doesn't have that ornamental aspect, it's definitely a fast grower type. Nice and dense, provides a good screen as well. And this is helping to also shade my house. So, you know, this wall here faces the west. So gets a lot of intense afternoon sun and this helps block that. You can see a fairly good size on this. Has been in the ground for about four years. I'm a huge proponent of planting clumping bamboo in the landscape here. There's so many misinformed people that are scared of it. Um, as you saw, a lot of these plants have been in the ground for quite a few years and they haven't really taken up a big footprint and they never will because they are clumping. Um, can completely transform your yard. They don't take a whole lot of care. 
So really it's just a matter of keeping that rhizome area, which is the first six to 12 inches moist. Not waterlogged, but moist. Um, for me, that means watering these pretty much every day in summer. You know, you can back off when the temperatures start dipping down. But you, you don't want to put the plant under stress and it can do that when it dries out. So just, you know, keep it watered. You don't need to deep water these. That really doesn't make sense for a bamboo because bamboos really don't grow deep. They're actually fairly shallow on their depth. The roots don't go any more than two to three feet in the ground. Bamboo command rich soil, which we, you know, don't have. We don't have organic material naturally in our soil, so we have to put that in. Um, you can top dress, you know, right in here with some manure. You can put compost down um, and or you can add some Osmocote time-released fertilizer, something applicable to bamboo that's going to have the high nitrogen figure. I'll link what I use. Um, as well as the nursery that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can find a lot of information out about different clumping bamboo varieties from that nursery. That's how I did most of my research to whittle down my choices to what made sense. You know, looking at minimum temperature to know what would do well in our climate with the possibility of an occasional freeze, even getting down to the mid 20s. So, you know, do your research find the right variety for your space, put it in the right location. Not all bamboos like full sun locations. All the varieties I showed you today are all proven um, and do get quite a bit of sun or had at one time and have done very well. Hope this tour gave you some enjoyment and you learned a bit as well. Thanks for joining me. Happy gardening.